Hey, it's me, Justin. You're about to listen or watch the Jury Daily program. You you like this? You like that? Huh? You want to see more of it? You want to get a shout out at the end of the show? Well, why don't you go on over to payjurydaily.com. Oh, welcome, friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is your old pal, Justin Robert Young, uh, bringing you yet again another episode of the Jury Daily Show. I have a very simple question that I'd like to ask of all of you. When do we start giving a shit about online petitions? Because I feel like they're... There was a moment in time where early people to the internet, of which I would I would I would include myself an early uh, an early settler, an early settler to the internet, that an online petition was thought to be a meaningless trifle. You know, it'd be something that it's like it was more of a personal gauge. Like, I wonder if more people think like me by the numbers. And so you would go to a petition, you'd sign a petition, you'd see, oh, there's 10,000 people that think enough like me that they also sign the same petition. Cool. I'm going to pack that into the... The little, uh, the little, a little, a little chest inside my heart, and I'm gonna remember it forever. But for whatever reason, now they're news stories. Like I, 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 I was, I was on, I was doing my, 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 my reading, my morning constitutional throughout the, 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 the Reddit grounds, and there was like petition to recall. Uh, Judge Kavanaugh reaches 15,000 signees. Now, I'm not going to get political here on whether or not you should or shouldn't oppose you know, Judge Kavanaugh. But, like, my answer to that, this is fairly, it was voted fairly high up. My answer to that is, on what level is that in any way newsworthy or significant? So what I'm going to do from here is literally just go into my, my I'm going to go into pedantic journalism bullshit because indeed I am a former journalist. Like 15,000 people is not statistically significant when looked at as a larger populace. You know, 15,000 people isn't even really significant if they were all in the same place, unless it was a very tiny town of 16,000 people. Like, then that would be a big deal. But otherwise, in terms of the the, the, the nation, who gives a... F- There's 15,000 people that all agree on some really weird fucking shit. Like, who are all into, like, a like pony... I will guarantee you that there are more people into pony play, Google it, than 15,000. There are more than 15,000 people currently right now searching and enjoying in illicit and provocative ways videos, stories, and pictures of pony play. So what? who cares about 15,000? If it were 10 million... Eight million is where you can say the population of New York City agrees with this one thing. That's about the point in which you can you can begin to think about, oh, okay, well, if every single person in New York City was upset about something, our largest city in America, 
then like, oh, okay, that would make sense. But 50, who gives a shit about 15,000? Nobody gives, and that's beyond the fact that it's like, uh, nobody can do anything. You're literally just saying, I'm upset. What takes more effort? Signing an online petition or putting a bumper sticker on your car? Probably the bumper sticker. Because at least publicly, you have to go around and be that guy. And sometimes you might face repercussions. When I was a kid, I got one of them, uh, them, 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 their uh, Darwin fish. All right, so it's like the Jesus fish, but it's got little feet on it. And it says Darwin in the center of it. This is just as I'm going through high school and I'm starting to uh, understand who I was philosophically. And so I found science and skepticism and atheism to be something that I was, I was drawn to. And so, like many other people, I wanted to signify it on the back of my car. It got ripped off the back of my car not once but twice. There was somebody very upset with my Darwin fish on my car. Not once but twice. Enough that, it, that, that, that they ripped it off. Now, at least... On some level, somebody probably knew that I was somebody that didn't philosophically align with them. There laid the possibility that I would have to get into a physical altercation, remote though that might be, with somebody in my neighborhood on religious grounds. If I were to put something political on there, I might get into a fight either verbally or physically with somebody based on the statement that I have made and am demonstrating on my car. There are none of those risks on an online petition. So from here on out, here is my new rule. All these petition sites, change.org, blah, blah, bleep, whatever. You can list whatever petition you want. But they don't show up in terms of numbers until you hit a million. How about that? This is my new petition site. The I'm not going to bother you as clickbait fodder petition site. Where unless you get a cool one million, you can't see. It's going to be the John Cena petition site. You can't see me. Unless you are over one million signees. I think at a million, you can say, all right, you want to know what that that might be that 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 that, that might be significant. That might be something that you would want to pay attention to. Even if it's something as stupid as release the Snyder cut. By the way, I watched the first hour of Justice League on the plane home. I think I might be in love with the DC universe. Like, it's so weird and odd. And like, the the movie is so like, just so ridiculously paced. So the movie opens, right? The movie opens with Batman doing Batman shit. There's a there's a guy who like robs something and Batman is on the uh it's on the roof and and uh and next thing you know the guy's like, "Huh, Batman." Ba 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 ba. He like shoots at him and Batman does Batman stuff and he's flipping around and he's like he's going around a water tower and then he goes and he gets the guy and he like Whaps him up with the with the bat grappling hook, and he hangs him off the 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 side of a uh, the, the the side of a, a thing. And the guy's like, uh, I don't know, man. I'm just a asshole crook. What do you want with me? Ben Affleck goes, Your fear. They smell it. 
All of a sudden, this alien comes up. Batman fights the alien, kills the alien. Then Batman leaves. And at first, I'm like, wait a minute. Is he not going to go back for the dude who just shot at him? Because that dude just shot, like, literally, you were you were doing a thing. You were, you were doing a thing where you were catching. He was, whether or not he was, he was doing an illegal thing. You're Batman still. Yes, the alien's dead. It's not like the alien got away and he was chasing after the alien. The alien dies, right? And then as he's leaving, the crook shows back up. The crook shows back up on the uh, uh on 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 the uh the, the 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 roof. And the crook's like, "Hey, what's with that alien?" And Batman's like, "I don't know." <laughs> and the crook's like, "He's having a conversation with Batman." 5 seconds ago, he was shooting at Batman. Then Batman used him as a human prop. And now instead of the crook being like, oh, fuck you, Batman, you almost got me killed by that alien. The crook's like, huh, see something new every day, I guess, Bats, right? And Batman's like, yeah, the world's crazy. So then the crook's like, hey, it's because Superman's dead. Right? And Batman's like, uh, I don't know. Maybe. And it's at this point I'm like, oh, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. I know what's happening. This is going to be that moment where the crook is talking to Batman. And then Batman is going to do a thing where he's just going to, he's going to like hit a button and next thing you know, the crook was accidentally standing on top of like a net uh, uh, with like a note that says uh, to Commissioner Gordon, you're welcome. And he's and Batman's going to go like boop. And then like he's going to go Whoa! and he's going to get caught up. Except that's not what happens. That's not what happens in the movie. In the movie, Batman just leaves. He just leaves. He's just like, that's because Superman died, right? And then he's like, <laughs> and then Batman's like, oh, I don't know, whatever. I'm bored. Deuces. Bat deuces. <laughs> anyway, see you later. And Batman just leaves. And the crook, I guess, goes on to continue robbing people because it's like well batman went and killed an alien i guess we're done i do gotta watch the rest of it i gotta it's so messy and weird i kind of love it we got your emails just or sorry jury daily at gmail.com again jury daily at gmail.com I asked you guys whether or not you knew off the top of your head, without Googling it, what a Sisyphusian cleanup would mean. Sisyphusian cleanup would mean. This is one of my, another one of my journalism pet peeves is just, if you're not writing like a big flowery thing, if you're not writing for the intellectual class that appreciates big fat hairy words then come on keep them out of the goddamn newspaper Sean writes the only Sisyphus I know is the Rick Wright track on side two of the Pink Floyd album I'm a Gumma all right so we'll go with no Mark writes I have no idea what a Sisyphusian cleanup is if it helps I'm white Evan writes, uh, about the Sisyphusian subtitle, yes, I'm aware of the myth, but that, that might just be because I'm a classics major, so I guess I'm not a good representation of the common folk. No, 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 it is a representation of classics majors. I, I guess I want to know how many classic, classics majors there are. St 
Stewart writes, Sisyphus was condemned for his crimes, I think, for serving up his son as a haunch of meat to a god, to eternally push a boulder laboriously up a hill, only for it to roll down the other side. He then had to start again. It is used as a metaphor for a task that seems to have no end. Blame grade six reading corner for this nugget of knowledge. Stuart, remembering shit from sixth grade. That's why you listen to Jury Daily. Tustin on YouTube writes, I know who Sisyphus is without looking it up, but I can't remember where I first learned about him. I do know that you can play a Sisyphus in the game Rock of Ages, where the main goal of the game is to roll a giant boulder down hills at your opponents who are also other historical figures. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Uh, Kyle on YouTube, uh, uh, off Sisyphus, uh, talking about a wedding that I went to over the weekend, uh, requests the angry email voice. <clears throat> Laid back wedding? This coming from a guy who literally made himself a spectacle and uh, his wedding a show at a convention and technically didn't even get married at it because the venue wouldn't allow it and got real married at a courthouse? I listen to every episode of your wedding podcast so I know I'm what I'm talking about. So there. Look. I liked putting on a big wedding for me. I enjoyed attending a laid-back wedding. That seems legit. I feel like that's... And also, I will say this about our wedding. We got married. If you're not familiar, me and my wife got married at Dragon Con. Our entire ceremony and reception took an hour. If every wedding... Now, I didn't have an open bar. If every wedding and reception could take an hour... We'd be very, very happy. Many people would be very happy. Gibson on YouTube says, Jerry, let me tell you, Cleveland ain't got shit on Cincinnati. I've lived here for 15 years now, and it is by far the best city in the Midwest. We have German heritage districts, a plethora of museums about uh, our role in the Underground Railroad, the number one team in the AFC North, and the first professional baseball team in America, and an up-and-coming professional soccer team with a stadium which will host a future World Cup game. The largest zoo in America with a baby hippo named Fiona... Uh, Graders, a.k.a. the best ice cream in America. Kings Island, a.k.a. the best amusement park in America. Skyline Chili, a.k.a. the best fast food in America. A thriving theater, uh, theater district, several gorgeous art museums, a massive airport, and a street car industrious companies like General Electric and Procter & Gamble, an aquarium, a truly contentious and engaging political scene where Democrats and Republicans spend millions of dollars just to win state office, and an excellent bus system. What does Cleveland have? The Browns, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They used to have LeBron, but now it's all going to shit. Cleveland wishes it could be the great state of Cincinnati. Number one, it's not a contest, bro. You're both in Ohio. Number two, I like Cincinnati. I think it's fine. I think it's good. Both cities have a 16-bit bar, and that goes for a lot in my book. Uh, I will also say that Cleveland didn't shoot their famous gorilla. I want to thank our producers, the Jen, PD Rave, Nonspecific, Rock and Roll Martian, Joe Acosta, Will, John H. Meyer, James, Bill, and Dustin. You can email me, jurydaily at gmail.com, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at Justin R. Young, hashtag join the conversation at diamondclub.reddit.com. If you're in the San Francisco Bay Area and you want to see me live, I am doing a live politics, politics, politics show at... Piano Fight in San Francisco, election night, November 6th, 7 p.m. You can get your tickets at bit.ly slash wavewatch. Friends, I want you to please give a round of applause for Mr. Wacky, but until tomorrow, more specifically, please don't. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>